What's up guys? So I just got in these new burrs from SSP. In this box here, inside here, you can see here, these are SSP cast burrs. So what's really interesting about these burrs is that they're modeled after a Didding Lab Sweet Burr. The origin of these burrs is really interesting. Apparently the story behind these burrs, it might be a bit apocryphal, but from what I hear, is that over at Didding, they had these burrs in a drawer um, from way back when burrs were cast and then machined as opposed to just fully machined. And then when they were developing the Didding Lab Grinder, they were just trying out a lot of different burrs. So they decided to try this old burr that they found in a drawer somewhere. And apparently the coffee made with that old cast burr was very sweet. So they made a version of that grinder called the Didding Lab Sweet. And inside that grinder are burrs that look similar to this. Um, but this is an SSP recent copy, in a sense, of that cast Didding burr. So you can see that it, inside here is casting marks. They're, they feel kind of rough as opposed to the finishing surface here, which is machined deadly smooth. So I'm really interested in trying these burrs and especially comparing it to the burrs I have inside here, SSP multi-purpose brew burrs. And I actually in the background, I have a DF64. It's kind of hard to see, maybe right around here you can see it. I also have uh, SSP multi-purpose burrs in that grinder. So once I get these burrs into the oat, I can do a taste test versus the uh, multi-purpose burrs. And I'll, I'll do that someday soon. But today I just want to show myself installing these burrs and showing how to get them aligned in the oat. To do this, it's quite simple. All you need is a screwdriver, a brush, something to brush into. And for alignment, you'll need a dry erase marker. The other thing we'll need here is a little bit of foil and some scissors, just to cut some shims. For the oat in particular, what you want to do is just remove uh, this faceplate. You just pop it off. And then you want to unscrew these bigger screws to get the faceplate off. And eventually we'll have to remove these smaller screws and that will help us uh, calibrate the grinder a touch. But for now, let's remove these bigger screws. But we can just clean this up using a brush here. So on the fellow's website, what they tell you to do is actually push the grinder and then pull out this key. And that doesn't always work for me, but if you just kind of pull on it, you can get this key out of the carrier. So I've got a new camera angle here. So in Phil's video, they show you just kind of pushing it down and the bird carrier popping out. But for my grinder, uh, it's pretty stuck in there. And what I actually have to do is take two bamboo skewers like this, try to catch the edge of the burr, just pull upwards. And eventually you should be able to pull it up enough that you can pull out the bird carrier. Now you can see inside here, I've got these SSP multi-purpose burrs. So I'm just gonna clean these up, brush out the outside of this. And honestly, whenever you're changing burrs, aligning burrs, anything with burrs, you wanna make sure you have as little ground, ground coffee around you as possible. So cleaning is probably the most important thing you can do because a little bit of ground coffee in between the burr carrier and the burr is gonna tilt the burr relative to the carrier. And that will cause a misalignment and that will make it difficult to systematically align your burrs. In the screws of your burr carrier, you'll have some harder to remove. It won't be as powdery coffee. You can just take the, your same skewer, just clean that up. And you wanna get out all the coffee from inside the screw head. So when you go to remove the burr from the carrier, you can get the screwdriver seated properly. It's helpful to have a stiff bristle brush like this. And honestly, as you go, just try to remove as many grounds as you can from all around the grinders. This is a great time to be cleaning your grinder. It's probably the only time you will Get your grinder as clean as it possibly could be. So you can see I already removed a lot of grinds from my, from my oat here that were just retained. All right, so once you've removed enough coffee from your grinder, you can go ahead and remove your burrs. And when you screw your burrs in, you should screw them tight enough to hold, but not too tight, such that they're going to taco the burr or bend the burr. So now this burr is gonna slide right out. And the oat actually, as far as grinders go, it's fairly well machined, so this burr fits pretty well in, the, in this carrier. And likewise, I can remove now the burr from this rotating burr carrier. So you can see here, once I remove this burr from the burr carrier, I actually already have some foil underneath here. And that's from when I last shimmed this grinder. And that's because on this burr, I noticed that there was a low spot right here in between. So I put one shim here and one shim here to form a tripod um, where this is the highest point. And now you have two high points on either side and that keeps the burr from 
kind of rotating back and forth this way on t as if there are only two high spots and you're going to go back and forth this way. It makes it very difficult to align. So you want, whenever you align, to put shims on outer edges so you form a tripod um, which forms a, a nice flat base for the bird to rest on. And then you can actually move the shims left and right. You can stack more shims on top and all of those things are going to help level your grinder but definitely you want at least two shims. Okay, so I've got everything cleaned up here and I've got my two burrs here. So on the back of your burr, sometimes it'll be a marking. This one says fixed and this one says rotary on the multi-purpose burrs. That lets you know where, where each burr should go on the grinder. For example, this fixed gear goes in here and this one says rotary. And so this one goes in the rotating burr carrier. This actually rotates. But on the back of these cast burrs, I'm not seeing any marks. So I'm assuming that they're symmetrical and looking at them just briefly, they look pretty symmetrical to me. So I'm just gonna put this burr inside here. So I've actually read on the internet the, that these burrs sit on the casting portion as opposed to the flat machined portion. So I'm gonna check that out. And I'm just gonna use the same trick that you use when you're aligning your burrs. Let's try to mark the actual mounting area, see which part of the carrier the burr sits on. And it does appear that the burr is making contact in multiple locations, you can see some, there's a line here where the burr is touching and there's also a line in here where the burr is touching. So that is a bit unfortunate. So this casting inner part here is sloped upward and then you have this flat machine part on the outside. And it does appear as though on the ode, it's making contact on that cast portion on the inner of the burr, which is not necessarily the flattest part. This one as well, I put the burr on here and I've rotated it a little bit. And you can see that the burr is actually making contact with the center of this burr carrier, which is gonna make this, <laughs> mounting this burr very difficult. Okay, I'm back, it's later in the evening, and I actually just got off Instagram with Hansung, and apparently this uh, issue with the center of this burr making contact with this burr carrier on the ode is a known issue. They are working on fixing that over at SSP. If you do end up with a burr that makes contact in the center of the carrier as opposed to the outside of the carrier, this method I'm doing now is what I would recommend you use. And so don't be afraid of buying these burrs, especially if you feel like you can align them, you should be able to do the same thing. So what we can do instead is actually shim under here, but we'll need a lot more foil uh, to do that. I'm gonna fold a piece of foil. So I'll just fold this over, starting at this lower edge here. See it on camera here? This is the second fold, third fold, and fourth fold. So this foil is now pretty thick, and I'll just cut out the shim here. Three tiny shims. So what I've done here is I've just folded over a piece of foil eight times and cut out a little strip. And I'm gonna put it inside here, inside this gap, move this burr carrier down and see if this shim moves. So actually right now it's still moving. Wow, it's a lot of space in between the burr and the burr carrier. So I'll have to fold it over a little bit more. <laughs> and this is kind of crazy. I've never had this many shims in a, in a grinder before. So right now what I have here is 12 layers of fo foil folded over on itself. And I'm gonna give this a test to see if it's gonna make contact at all. So I'll just put it in here. Move the burr down, not even tightening it, and just see if I can move the, finally, with 12 pieces of foil here, this foil is no longer moving. So I'm just gonna put 12 pieces of foil folded over on itself underneath each of these screws, and that will be my baseline for this alignment. So I'm just gonna try to do another wipe test here. So now you can see our baseline here. This is the highest point. So um, what we wanna do is actually just raise up this point over here. So I'm gonna, Fold this foil over two more times and I'll put a new shim underneath over here at the two o'clock. I'm just gonna fold this piece of foil over. I've already folded it once, but I'll fold it over one more time. So you can see what I'm doing. And then I'll cut a new shim. Put it right here, just outside of the shim graveyard. The evidence of my wasted life. Unscrew these guys a little bit, pull out this shim, and then I'll put this new shim in. And then we'll retighten. We'll refresh our little marker here. Reinstall the burr. Reinstall the adjustment plate, and then get it to touch. 
Has it improved? Potentially. Maybe not so much. So why don't we go with three more layers of foil on this side since two didn't do so much. It's looking better. Now we have two quarters wipe. So actually what it looks like what we want now is to raise up both of these. So I can fold this over one more time and then I'll add one more layer here and one more layer here and see if that's helpful at all. Same deal. This madness. <laughs> so here we have it. 19 layers on the two o'clock, 13 layers on the 11 o'clock, and 12 layers on the uh, six o'clock. Great reveal. Perfect wipe. Oh my God. <laughs> Perfect wipe. Well, you know, a little bit off here, but I'm not going any further than I've gone. And then we can start working on the inner burr. So the inner burr I'm imagining has the same issue. And I'm quite sure that this burr does have the same problem as the outer burr. So I can definitely see where the burr is making contact. And also because of how thin this channel is. So I'm gonna start with a new piece of foil and fold them much thinner. So before it was 12 shims just to get it touching, but there's no guarantee that it's machined to the same depth. It's likely to be the same number of shims. So I'm just gonna try to fold 12 times here. As thin as possible for the first fold. We're just gonna try to do the same thing that we did last time, just thinner. And I'm gonna go up to 13 just for good measure. 13, ah. So I have 13 layers deep worth of foil. I need to fit them in this very small region. So I'm gonna cut them very thin. Let's see if this shim is gonna fit in here. All right, so I got some tweezers here. I'm gonna move this 13 deep shim into the burr carrier. Perfect, that worked out really well. Okay, then I can do that for each of these. I'm gonna put the hallmark up towards the top. So the uh, top burr is gonna be the same process as the bottom burr. So I'm just gonna do this off camera and I'll show you when it's done. Okay, I just take it apart and you're not gonna believe it. I put in 13 shims under each of these screws and it is almost a perfect wipe. There's a little bit less here, a little bit less there. Maybe that's a little bit of tacoing. Wow, that is looking real good. So I consider this grinder to be fully aligned. It's very close to being fully aligned. So if you have SSP caspers and you have an ode, you know, don't be afraid. You can still align it. It will just take a little bit more effort. So I recommend, depending on your particular burr or carrier, what you should do is what I did. You know, fold maybe 10 or 12 sheets of foil. Uh, put this burr flat against the burr carrier and just see if it moves inside here, this gap here. And if it does, then just add a little bit more foil, add another fold. And so I got to 12 folds each, ended up with uh, 13 layers of foil here, 19 layers of foil here. Inside here, I actually just put 13 layers under each of these screws. And I did that by folding over this foil and just cutting out a little shim. Uh, the thing I like about folding over the foil is the shim stays as one piece. If you are adding additional pieces of foil, it gets very difficult to uh, manage them and make sure they stay in the same place. So I'm going to reassemble this grinder. We want to find the zero point on this grinder, screw down to where it no longer turns, go back a quarter turn, turn on your grinder, and then tighten it until you hear the burrs touching. And that's what you'll set as your zero. So basically this is finest, and you, if you want this to be zero, put this knob back on and then just screw down these screws. And then we can just make sure we're still having our zero. And my zero, I can have my touch right about here at about half half a step. And unfortunately with this ode, because of how this detent plate is shaped, you can't have zero be true zero, or you can't have this one marker be true zero. So it's always gonna be a little bit up. That's calibrating your grinder. So once you've done that, you can screw everything in and you can use it, make some coffee. So I'll probably spend some time seasoning this and testing it before I give any sort of taste test. Usually you need to run you know, five or 10 pounds of beans through a grinder before the burrs start functionally how they normally would. And I'll come back later with a taste test, but for those of you who bought uh, these cast burrs, I just wanted to put this video out so you know how to align an ode, um, especially with these cast burrs, the first generation of these cast burrs. And thanks for watching and I uh, hope you have a nice day.